sorry, friends. I got a new flock now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my little Luxes. This is another episode of Luxy Charms, and I am your host, cosplayer Charcy Lux. And today I am dressed in cosplay as Dalface to be on brand for the horror movie review we are doing today for The Funhouse Massacre. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello again, and welcome all ghouls and goblins and freaks and weirdos all alike. Step right up. Welcome back to another Luxie Charms. And for the month of August, we are enjoying for the end of the summer and doing Fun House of Horrors. We're just getting at the tail end of the summer so we can enjoy a bunch of different fairs and carnivals and now we're getting into the mood and the mode to be into autumn and what is better than going to carnivals and going and seeing the fun houses now i have been wanting to do this theme i have wanted to talk about this movie for quite some time now obviously i was throwing a bunch of different names for the theme but fun house of horrors is definitely perfect for this little scenario and i am finally dressed up again as dollface and the last time that i tried to record this movie review it did not go so well and it might have been because of this little guy right here. And I could tell by my other recordings when I had it clipped to my shirt. It sounded like I was far away or echoing or underwater, as my husband eloquently put it. So if I hold it, it seems to do better. Which someone explained to me why something that is supposed to be clipped down here sounds so far away. But if I hold it to like a special little mini tiny microphone, it finally sounds perfect for sound. I am not tech savvy in any way or form. If there is a special way that I'm supposed to be adjusting this thing so that it sounds normal if I have it clipped to me. I mean, I guess I could clip it to my fabulous wig today and it might be right next to my mouth. I don't know. But... Thank you once again for coming and joining me for this movie review of a fantastic horror movie. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and come join the Luxy family. There's always room for more in this family. And as always, I need to jump in with a spoiler alert. For those of you who have not seen the film and you don't like spoilers, you will want to go and watch the film then before this. And it is free to watch on Tubi as of today in this moment. I can't promise that it will stay there for free. So you better go quick and go watch The Funhouse Massacre. So spoiler alerts. And viewer discretion advised. We are talking about a horror film, and I am going to go into detail with some of the very epic kills in this film. You have been warned. We will open up by talking about the cast and the crew of this film. You have Jer Burns as Mental Manny, Scotty Thompson as Sheriff Kate, Matt Angel as Morgan, Robert Ungland as Warden Kane, Clint Howard as the Taxidermist, Mars Crane as Rocco the Clown, Sebastian Segel as Dr. Suave, E.E. E. Bell as Animal the Cannibal, Candace Deviser as Dollface, Chasty Belstros as Christina, Courtney Gaines as Dennis, Renee Dorian as Lori, Sterling Solomon as Jason, Ben Bagley as Deputy Doyle, Eric Chavara as Gerardo, Michael Eric Reed as Mikey, Leah Parker as Randall, and director of this film is Andy Palmer, 
And the writers, you should recognize the names as Ben Bagley and Renee Dorian, who both played parts in this film as actor and actress. And as always, I apologize if I butchered any pronunciations of people's names. I'll start with a quick plot synopsis from IMDb. Six of the world's scariest psychopaths escape from a local asylum and proceed to unleash terror on the unsuspecting crowd of a Halloween funhouse whose themed mazes are inspired by their various reigns of terror. This film came out back in 2015, and it is actually rated as both a comedy and a horror. And the fact that the tagline is, murder is all part of the show. This film opens up with a journalist showing up at an asylum that is very secretive about its patients that are down below in the basement locked away from the rest of the town and the rest of the world. So this journalist, Miss Quinn, shows up super late, claiming that she was very late due to the fact that traffic was killer. Little late for visitors. I apologize. I had an appointment with Warden Kane hours ago. Traffic was murderous. Now, Dr. Kane, who is played by the very famous Robert Ungland. So there are lots of fantastic cameos from different variations of people who we have seen throughout time who play different very famous horror icons. Now, we would know Robert Ungland as more famously as Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street franchises. This now, even though Miss Quinn is showing up super late for her appointment, now she is a very lovely lady. And the fact that she is also a journalist, and something is on my roof. And Dr. Kane wants to basically appease this journalist and doesn't want to have the world know of the secrets that they have hidden below. So they invite her in to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the doctor so that he can explain to her why they have these patients and why they have them in secret. I mean, do you really believe that out of the millions of people in this country, there are more than just a handful of sickos? Hmm? I mean, Dahmer and Bundy and Gacy, they're just the ones that got all the press. Here, we house the ones that you whisper about around the campfire. So he shows Miss Quinn down in their prison area where five different notorious killers are all hidden below. And he explains them each to her one by one because her main question is, why do they have patients locked away that the rest of the world knows nothing about? She also asks Dr. Kane, what are their intentions with these patients? Well, obviously, in his mind, these are very terrible, horrible, very horrific men that are very scary and deadly. And if it was his way, he would just kill them all and not let the rest of the world know about them. And of course, Miss Quinn wants to know, what about their rights? And he flat out said, he goes, these are not men. These are monsters. So they should not have rights. If I didn't have those SOBs up in the state house, nosing around my business, I'd put a bullet in each of their heads. So he goes and he tells Miss Quinn about each individual that is locked away in this asylum. You have Animal the Cannibal, who was killing certain customers, cooking them up and serving them to other customers at the restaurant that he worked at. He was only caught because one of his meals fought back 
Then you have Dr. Suave, who is a dentist who decided that not every tooth problem could be solved. So those patients were the ones that he would off. And then you also had the taxidermist who specialized in exotic birds. And as Dr. Kane so eloquently put it, said that the more exotic, the more it thrilled him. So you can just imagine that what some of his exotic birds were. And then you also had Rocco the Clown, who was a famous fighter in the ring, but unfortunately he was a little too brutal and had several victims in the ring. So they just covered it up and said that he had retired and they locked him away at this asylum. And last but not least, at the end of the line, you had the prophet, or as Dr. Kane and the rest of the guards like to call him, Mental Manny. He had a cult that had the largest suicide pact, but they wanted to keep that very private, so of course, Mental Manny was locked away with the rest of them. Now, in this moment, Miss Quinn faints because she is surrounded by all these terrible, scary men. Are you alright? I'm sorry. Can we take a break from these awful men? Uh, of course, uh, right this way. So she has Dr. Kane take her to his office so that she can rest up and rest easy while she's recovering from the trauma of seeing all these scary men. But come to find out, Miss Quinn is not what she says she is. She is not the journalist. She is, in fact, Dollface, or the Stitchface Killer. So she offs Dr. Kane, and then goes and gets into costume after she offs and kills the rest of the guards, of course, and she releases the five inmates down below. Daddy. How's my little doll face? Never better. My daddy is the devil now we live. So now you have six different serial killers who are released, and it is, of course, Halloween night. So they make their way to this fun house of illusions, and here there are several different local legends around this town. Very popular urban legends and myths. And what ended up happening is that all these local urban legends were transformed at this fun house and made into rooms dedicated to these urban legends. And if you guess it correctly, these urban legends are all based off these six characters that you just met at the beginning of the film with the asylum. Everything set up like we planned? Yes, Daddy. Then let's give the boys a tour of their new playground. So you show up at this fun house finding out that Manny, mental Manny, is actually the father of Delface, and that they have been planning this for quite some time, and that Delface was dating the owner to this fun house, and that she had instigated to him each room to be made and dedicated to each one of these characters. This is a big night for me. I built this place from the ground up. And I'll be guided. Your ego is astounding. You think all this was your idea? Damn straight. My little Eileen and I have been planning this for quite some time. You were just a puppet. And she pulled just the right strings to ensure that you created the perfect form for our return. So each one of these killers goes out and starts killing all the people that work at this fun house and start taking over their dedicated areas. Since it's a fun house, people are going to show up especially for Halloween, they are showing up to have some fun. So of course we are introduced to other characters of the film who are supposed to be 
are our good guys, I guess you could say, or in the other ways that we like to say in horror, our cannon fodder for the masses. <laughs> You have these group of friends that were working at this restaurant together. And all of them, since it's Halloween night, they're getting excited. They want to go out. They want to explore this fun house. Of course, you have the atypical couple of characters that have no interest. But because of pure pressure, they're going to go to this fun house. Listen, we're in. We just got to get these two pussies to go. I didn't say that I... Oh, come on, guys. Guys, come on. It's not like... The fun house is positioned creepily in the middle of nowhere with only a broken down asylum nearby, haunted by the ghosts of its dead, deranged inmate. But what they don't realize is that when they walk into this fun house, everything that is happening is real. All these actors that they think are being killed. Ah! Ah! <laughs> they come to find out everything is real. So they show up and all havoc breaks loose. And of course, thinking that these people could run away and get help. But of course, they are locked within this fun house and have no way to escape. But there is no way to fear too much that there is a cop that is hot on the trail of the stitch face killer and also for the fact that she is finding clues along the way along with finding the actual dead miss quinn in her hotel room that leads them to go and check out the asylum so of course when they get to the asylum and find dr kane and his crew all dead and then they come to realize that the prank phone calls about people being murdered at the fun house. Well, what's going on? What were you saying about the kids in those prank calls? Uh, just that their friends are being murdered at the fun house. Why? What? what? Oh, crap, Ola. Oh. All of a sudden, it dawns on the sheriff that these murders are really happening. So, her and her deputy go out to this fun house and gather a few survivors to start fighting off these six very dangerous serial killers. But will they be able to prevail in killing off these very deadly, very dangerous men and women? Because they could be just a step ahead of them. Now, I won't give away the exact ending to this film. You're going to have to watch this one to find out how it ends. But I will give you a little hint that there are two end credit scenes that you should definitely make sure you watch. Especially on Tubi, because it tends to just go to the credits and then loop to another movie. So you're going to want to make sure you stay with that film so that you can see the mid credit scene and the end credit scene. Now, I did talk quite a bit about the beginning of the film, which obviously that is the core to the entire film is finding out about these different serial killers and what is their ways of killing people to find out that of course this fun house is dedicated to each one of these guys so they're going to go to this fun house take it over and be able to play out their urban legends a haunted attraction that has caused some controversy in recent weeks drawing from local urban legends one maze is actually based on Manuel dyer's mass suicide 10 years ago is this in poor taste or just good old-fashioned spooky fun they are actually real that they're not urban legends but because this all happened in the area and they are real it just brings that extra element to the idea of maybe all these myths and legends that we are hearing through the grapevine, maybe there's some truth to some of these. <laughs> and this was filmed at the Land of Illusion Scream Park, just outside of Middleton, Ohio. In fact, most of the 
Filming was done at Middleton, Ohio itself. This is a screen park that you can actually go and see. So it would be really cool that to kind of do kind of exactly what I did for Paranormal Island was that I went and saw the actual place, Blarney Island, where this would be really cool too, to actually go and go through the theme park that this movie was filmed at. So it's definitely something to add to my bucket list and Middleton, Ohio, it'd be quite a trip, but worth it. And the Land of Illusion Scream Park is actually named after Clive Barker's book, Lord of Illusion. At the beginning of the film, Bundy, Dahmer, and Gacy are mentioned by Dr. Kane, and of course, we know them more famously. In fact, that's one of the hints that Dr. Kane gives, is that these were the serial killers who were in the media. So they were actually talked about, whereas he said, that, you know, the possibility that there are way more scary people out there in the world, but they're kept secret. They're kept hush-hush. Now that you have seen who, what we host here, do you really think it's wise to divulge it to the entire world? All the inmates in our system should be accounted for and treated fairly. They're still human beings. Look, man, have you seen anything in here that's even remotely human? So that also kind of was a scary element to make you stop and think like, hmm, this could be a possibility of a real thing because you know what? People with money can pay and say, hey, make this go away. Make this secret be kept a secret. So kind of a creepy note to think about. No, don't like that. Now with the reference to Bundy, Gacy, and Dahmer, you have three characters in the Funhouse Massacre that are direct references to these actual real-life serial killers. So you have Animal the Cannibal, you have Rocco the Clown, and you have Dr. Suave. So these were direct references to these real serial killers in the film. I'm going to butcher her name, I don't want to. Candace Deviser. It is her debut film, and she's the character that played the Stitch Face Killer, or... Miss Quinn, or in the other doll face. So, I mean, she's got quite a few names in this film. But, of course, when hearing Miss Quinn, that is also another direct reference to Harley Quinn from the DC Universe, because the idea of, for Harley Quinn, she breaks into the asylum to help her boss or her lover, the Joker, to escape. So, this Miss Quinn, or doll face, breaks into this asylum so that she can break her father, Mental Manny, out. So, it's a pretty cool little reference that's mixed in there with the rest of it. Now, actress Renee Harbeck was actually first asked to play the Stitch Face Killer, but due to scheduling conflicts, she had to decline and she wasn't able to do it. But I am actually pretty happy that Candace Deviser was able to do this, and for this being her debut film, I'm very impressed. And I'm actually shocked that she's not in more films. <gasps> Jeez. Someone takes her job a little too seriously? What are you gonna do? Cut me with it? <laughs> okay, isn't this a time out zone for the freak show? Now, this is not the only film that she has worked with director Andy Palmer on. She has also worked on Camp Coldbrook with him. Now, Andy Palmer has not done a lot of films, and Camp Coldbrook is also another film that in due time I would like to do a horror movie review on it due to the fact that not a lot of people talk about that one. And I, well, could just kind of give you a little hint that I did enjoy it, and I feel like it's an underrated film. And Danielle Harris is also in that film as well. And yeah, from what I can see with Candace Deviser right here, is that she's only on here for credits to two films, The Funhouse Massacre as Dollface and Camp Coldbrook as Emma. And that was in 2018, so... And like I said, I was impressed with her character in this film, so I'm actually shocked that she's not in more films. I am shocked! Shocked! Ah! 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 
So now step right up, step right up, my little Luxes. We are now here for the final thoughts of what I think of the film. This is very underrated. I don't know why more people don't talk about this film or appreciate this film. And I love this film. This is a fun one. It's got a lot of campiness to it. It's got epic kills and the gore in it is like perfect for the storyline like i hate films that are just torture porn to be torture porn this one is the right kind of gore to make the kills epic and cool especially for this funhouse feel for halloween and everything it's it's like the perfect mixture of everything in line to make this film just so much fun and campy and like i said it's also a comedy so it's also funny well dark humor obviously if you don't like horror movies you're not gonna find this funny but you wouldn't even be here on my channel anyways if horror is not for you you're you're not gonna care about this film but in my opinion this film is super underrated and i i love this movie this is up there on my list. I love watching this one. This is perfect to watch with friends that you can just have a great time watching it. And it almost feels like two separate stories. And then they collide in together by the middle of the film. Which, I mean, that's usually how it goes with good storylines. Is that you have several different storylines going on at the same time. And then they all come together at the end. That's just good storytelling, duh. Duh. But I, I love this film, and I feel like if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend that you check it out. And this is one of those ones where it's just like, I just, I don't know why it's not appreciated. And I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to go down the list of like what I appreciate and love in horror movies, and it just, it goes all the check marks for me and i don't even want to say that it's cheesy or anything it's just it's it's funny it's comedy with the horror the gore the kills I was an underground wrestler until he accidentally killed one too many opponents in the ring <laughs> And obviously, like I keep saying, if you're not into horror, this is not going to be for you. So yes, I recommend this film. And please, check it out if you haven't checked it out. And every single one of the serial killers that I, I really like them. And I love Stitch Face. So I would love to see Candace Deviser be in so many more films. Loved her character. And I even really liked the sassy character, Christina, in this as well. Obviously, you're rooting for her character when she dies. Spoilers! I like how Chastity, or Chastity, however she pronounces her name, which I apologize if I'm butchering it, but I appreciate how she played the character and the whole idea with the Stitch Face Killer was the idea that she went after and she killed all the pretty girls. She killed all the popular girls. So, of course, this character she was going to go after. So, it made perfect sense. But I like the films where you have the mixture of the characters. You, you gotta have the characters that you're rooting for them to die because they're dislikable characters. But you also have the characters that you root for and that you want to make it to the end. Because a lot of newer films we've been realizing as of lately is that they have no character built to them. There's, you're, you're not really rooting for a certain person or a character because they're not likable. Whereas in this, I love the characters. Even the bad characters. Even the bad guys in this. It's like it's just... It's great acting and really good writing and just a fun, campy horror film. So I could go on and on and on about this film. Obviously, I really love this film. So yes, I do recommend it and I hope you will check it out. You can do it. All right, my little ghouls and goblins and all my little luxes. I have gone on and on and on about this film and what I think about it, the plot line and everything. So I'm going to end this out 
by saying, what are your thoughts on the film if you've seen it? And I hope this is high up on your list as well. And if you dislike it, let me know. Why do you dislike it? Because obviously we love these conversations and just getting a feel of what people like or dislike. And I hope to have more movie reviews for Fun House of Horrors. Maybe I'll have some lighter ones or not. Because I tell you what, getting into these spooky, in-depth cosplays, they are super fun. But they are a lot of work. Especially when you go through and you do it once and then it's unusable and you gotta motivate yourself to do it again, you know. I was triple A rated. Executive protection four. Minor details. And once again, thank you so much for joining me here on another Luxy Charms. And thank you for joining me here for Fun House of Horrors and enjoying this movie review of the Funhouse Massacre. And if you would like to follow me on my other social medias, please follow me on my Twitter for Charcy Lux with three X's, or on my threads or Instagram for Charcy87, or also on my Blue Sky for Charcy Lux with three X's. And I am the afterlife of the party, and I would love for you to come join me here in the afterlife of the party, and to always remember to slay, subscribe, like, and always be yourself. Until next time, my little Luxes, have a Luxy Charms kind of day. Bye! Chastity, Chasty, Belstros, Leah Parkle, and as always, I apologize if I butchered any's. Now, this now, this film, even though, Miss Quinn, <laughs> you have Annabel and a <laughs> and gather certain survivors. This is why I leave all my lists up, because otherwise, I forget names. Even though I've watched the film, like, how many times now? <laughs>